Hi all, so this uh, video is going to be looking at a bit of exam revision based on the poet Paul Durkin. Now, there's a number of poems by Durkin on the course. This video is just going to look at six. Okay, it wouldn't be really feasible to go through all of the poems in one video. So the six poems that this video is going to look at are Nessa, The Girl with the Keys to Pierce's Cottage, Wife Who Smashed the Television Gets Jail, Parents, Sport, and then The MacBride, The Dynasty. Uh, and it's going to go through them in that order, so if it comes along to one that is not one that you've studied, just skip along past that one. Okay, so the first thing we want to look at in terms of getting ready for a, a question on Durkin is a past exam question. So Durkin has only come up once before, he came up in 2016. And the question that was asked was, Durkin takes a narrative approach to explore a variety of issues in poems of great emotional honesty. Discuss this statement, supporting your answer with reference to the poetry of Paul Durkin on your course. There's also a sample question here, right, just to give a bit of you know, variety of questions. And the sample question is, Durkin uses vivid description of personal memories to create universally relatable poetry. Discuss this statement, supporting your answer with reference to the poetry of Paul Durkin on your course. Okay, so for any exam question, really what we want to get first is to look at what the key words are. They break down the question into the important, important points. So for these questions, for 2016, what are we really looking at? What is the question asking us to focus on? So first of all, it's telling us that he takes a narrative approach. Right? We must talk about his narrative approach, this form of poetry, this form of writing. It says he explores a variety of issues, so we have to talk about a number of different issues and there's great emotional honesty. Okay, so these are three key terms within the question. This is really what the, the examiner is going to be looking at. Are you uh, answering, are you addressing those three key points? In terms of the sample question, the key terms we have are vivid description, we have personal memories, and universally relatable. Okay, so when you're answering Irish questions, you must be focused on those points. Right? Every paragraph, every poem you discuss, you should be going back to looking at the three key points in that question. Okay, so we're going to start off just with Nessa, and I'm just going to go through a quick reminder of what Nessa is about, some of the themes, quotes, etc. Okay, so reminder, Nessa recalls when Durkin meets his wife and the intensity of their relationship. Right? The themes of Nessa are romantic love, there's the journey of a relationship, right? so the journey through first meeting and, the, and moving into a long-term relationship and then towards um, kind of a bit of conflict in the relationship, and Durkin's are feelings of inadequacy and self-deprecating language. Right? Imagery in here, the whirlpool, of course, you can't forget the whirlpool, she was a whirlpool, remember? So whirlpool has to move along with imagery here. We also have the idea of the land versus sea, so Nessa is constantly uh, connected with the sea and with water, whereas Durkin is connected with maybe the more uh, mundane land, okay, so she is the excitement of the sea, he is the mundane land, uh, he, is on, he is trying to invite her to be on the rocks. And there's the idea of drowning, okay, that he is drowned in her, she is possibly more than he is capable of handling. But also that links into his back to his sense of inadequacy and self-deprecation. Self uh, some of the poetic features we're looking for here is the repetition of the refrain. Right? We have a metaphorical imagery, that's the um, whirlpool. We have uh, anecdotal writing, so it's telling us stories from his past. And then we have the final stanza is two lines longer to slow the rhythm. Okay? So really, should, you know, this is just a quick run through of the poem. You should have a good familiarity with the poem already. These are some of the key quality features you should be able to pick out. Right? And key quotations for Nessa, it's what everyone seems to worry about in the exams, do I have the quotations? So, four quotations for Nessa. Number one, and I was very nearly drowned. Okay, there's our refrain, we have to back to that. Uh, take off your pants, she said to me. So this is the sense of her being in control of the relationship, the power and how he is drowned by her, the excitement of her. In a taxi cab wrapped up in dust, so this is him being on the van, his life is not being uh, up to the excitement of the, that her life, the way she lives is. 
And then you are a whirlpool and I am very nearly drowned. So this is the final line to poem I'm looking at. The change that I am very nearly drowned is the current situation is speaking directly to her. Okay. Second poem we're going to look at is The Girl with the Keys to Pierce's Cottage. So just a reminder, this poem is where Durkin recalls a memory of a girl he had a crush on as a teenager, Coit Kalan. Uh, Coit was working at Pierce's Cottage Museum, but will soon be moving to America. Right? So the themes we're looking at here, we have the theme of emigration. Coit is representative of the, um, the young Irish population leaving the country. We have young love, okay? So this is a different type of love to the uh, love in Nessa, but it's still a love nonetheless, and it's you can compare the love he has for his wife to this kind of uh, young crush love in the girl with the keys to Pierce's cottage. I also have the sense of nationality coming in here, Ireland, Irish pride, very, very important. Imagery, we have the keys, so remember quite hold the keys, she's the girl with the keys, and these are the keys possibly not just to the cottage and the museum, but also to Irish history or Irish language or Irish nationality. Okay? And by her leaving, we have our busy comedy on the nation losing its history, losing its culture, losing its language. The image of Coy Galan being representative, as I said, of the young population of Irish people. And then finally we have the wet patch, the peeling jams, so that the cottage is kind of falling apart and it's not being taken care of and perhaps this is kind of dark and commenting on Irish past and Irish uh, how the Irish are treating their culture. In terms of poetic features we need to watch out for the symbolism of the cottage resembling the neglected history and culture. We have the reference to the Renaissance artist El Greco. We have alliteration in relation to Pierce and then we have a lot of repetition going on here. Right, so you should be able to find, find all of those techniques and comment on them within that home. And then on to our quotations we have her dark hair was darker because her smile was so bright. This is linking into Coit being somewhat mysterious and very alluring to uh, Durkin. I recall wet tack from peeling jams, very important in terms of the symbolism of the cottage. And sun red skirt and moon black blazer with colour imagery there, looking toward our strange world wide eyed. Okay, different perspectives. And she had no choice but to leave her home. Very, very important quotation, I think. Everyone really should have that quotation from this poem and, you know, commenting on the forced immigration of the Irish youth. Okay, kind of condense the next one down a little bit more into one slide. So, The Wife Who, wife who Smashed Television Gets Jail, a very popular poem from Durkin. So, the poem is written like a tabloid article, very important in terms of the form of the poem, covering a court case of a wife who came home from the pub and smashed the television. Most, most of the speech comes from the husband, very importantly, the wife is not given a voice here. Right? We look at um, the male misog the misogyny in this, and we notice that all of the speech is either from the husband or from the justice of Leda. The wife is not given a voice, very important in terms of this cultural um, critique going on here. The themes we have is family relationships, okay? What is the role of family and the role of television and modernity, and the effects of modernity on family, we have violence, okay? there's different interpretations of what is violence, so we have the wife is very much critiqued for her violence of smashing the television, and yet we have to watch in Kojak, a very violent program, seems to be accepted, even when the Kojak kills a woman with the same name as the wife. Uh, criticism of technology in our lives, he's very much criticising, you know, are we being reflecting on the effect of modernity and technology in our lives and then it's very misogynist, it highlights misogyny in the world, in the culture, in our culture that he sees around. The images that stand out are the smashed television, okay? we have the judge and the court, okay, and that she's been put on trial, and then we have the Kojak and the snarling of Queen, uh, uh, Queen Maeve in it. Okay? We have that allusion back to Irish mythology through Queen Maeve as well. And we have that. Uh, poetic features, we must talk about the journalistic writing here, and the lack of emotion inherent in that. We have direct speech from the husband, okay, the husband directly accusing the wife. We have a lot of hyperbole and the colloquial language going on, which is so typical of Dirk. And then some quotations from here. Me and the kids were peaceably watching Kojak. 
I didn't get married to a television. I don't see why my kids or anybody else's kids should have a television for a father or a mother. That's quite a long quote, but a very useful one. It's an easy one to remember as well. Why is you prefer a bar billiards to uh, family television where it's threat to the family? Okay. Really pointing out misogyny here and that he only says wives. And as indeed the television itself could be said to be a basic unit of the family. Those are hyperbole and very much our social critique in that quotation itself. Okay, so let's keep moving on and we're on to parents. This poem number four so far. Parents, this poem examines the moment of parents looking at their sleeping child. Do parents feel complete love for the child, but also know that they are separated and will always be separated, separate from the, to their child? So it's that barrier. And then we have that imagery of the sea coming back, which can be connected over to Nessa. All right. So the themes here is a bit more straightforward. We have family. Okay, with the parents of the child. We have the connection. Okay, the sense of connection. Can they be connected? Okay. Possibly looking at uh, the girl with the keys to Pierce Cottage, okay, and his lack of connection there. We have a sense of loss, and that the parents feel that they've lost something by not being able to have a true connection, and of course, love comes in. The imagery of the sea, very, very important in this poem. Okay, the sea is basically the central image, and we have a bit of humour coming through with the fearful fish with the purses of orifices and with the drowned face. Okay, you can link that sea and the drowned back to the metaphor that he uses in NASA very clearly. Uh, poetic features is the extended metaphor that is the sea, quite a bit, bit of alliteration, a little bit of humour in there, and there is definitely a lot of repetition. Okay, so you should be aware of all of those going on within this poem. And then some key quotations. A child's face is a drowned face. Uh, she is under the sea and they are above the sea, as if locked out of their own home. And then my personal favourite, pursed up orifices of fearful fish, the big ears are fins behind glass. There's your humour. There's the humorous imagery coming in through the poem. Alright, so sport. Sport is probably the most popular poem by Durkin on the course. And it looks a lot at his personal life. So the poem takes place when Durkin was a patient in a mental hospital. His family had him committed because they disagreed with some of his choices. In the poem, Durkin's father has come to see him play in a football match against another mental hospital. Okay, so the setting of this and the uh, connections to Durkin's uh, very unique life are make this quite a popular poem. Some of the themes in here, we have family. Okay, so again, family comes up over and over again when Durkin works. We have a sense of betrayal betrayed by his family and again back to his inadequacy. Okay? So if you want to look at the inadequacy of Durkin's work, you might comment on it here and then does that affect how he acts with his wife Nessa? Uh, imagery with the intimidating op opposition players. Okay? Some quite visceral image in how they're described. The, there's the goalkeeper, it's him being the goalkeeper in trying to do his best to impress his father and there's the shaking hands with his father at the end Okay, and then his tone how it discusses that. Uh, we have poetic features, we have a lot of hyperbole in the description of the match. We have a bit of humour going on there in terms of it's quite a dark humour but it is there. It's an anecdotal poem again, okay, so we link into anecdotal and narrative style. And we have a bitter tone And just our four quotations from this one. On the sidelines and observe me, I made the keyword observe there. His father is observing, so he's judging. A castrated his best friend, and there's that quite shocking imagery coming uh, through, which kind of enhancing the danger that he might be in. That will to die that is essential to sportsmen as to artists. And maybe a connection here that, you know, between the sportsmen and the artist and by his father, that he sees them as being as with a lot of common features, and maybe his father didn't. Seldom, if ever again, was I to rise to these heights. Very, very important poem. The last quotation from the end of the poem really highlights the overall feeling Durkin has here. And our final poem is the MacBride Dynasty. So, the MacBride Dynasty recalls Durkin's memory being brought to his grand aunt Maud gone as a young boy. We learned that Durkin was afraid of the elderly lady and ran away from her. Durkin's mother, who did not like Maud, took some pleasure in this. We know that the family never actually forgave Maud for accusations against John McBride following their divorce. So 
For this poem, you should have a good historical knowledge of the relationship of Maud Gaunt and John McBride. Okay, you should understand what happened there, um, and you know why this is such a long history. Okay, and it's important to understand the fame of this family to understand the poem, because they are constantly in the public eye being judged. So they keep up the facade of being united, and yet the judgments put upon them are, you know, at the, uh, on their relative, on John McBride, very much, you know, related to Malgon, there's a lot of bitterness in there. The themes here, we have the idea of family, again, okay, here it's family, and the idea of loyalty, and it's quite a complex idea going on here, is the question is Durkin being disloyal by writing this poem, okay? the idea of betrayal, okay, there and misconceptions. He's trying to write an uh, wrong and misconception about his about John McBride, his ancestor. There is imagery of wealth. Okay, he's quite wealthy in his family. There's the facade of the family. The, the impression they give is false. There's the lizard of eyes. Mark on as you know, she sees her as monstrous, whereas most people revere her as a hero. And then there's the concept. There's the idea of Dark and the Mother. It's quite important. As well, and Durkin was quite close to it. Uh, in terms of poetic features, we've got a lot of hyperbole. We have animalistic feature or animalistic imagery in terms of the description of Malcolm, with a bit of sarcasm going on, and then we have the childish language when he keeps saying money. Okay. And our quotations were here to show off to the servant of the queen. Okay. You should know that that's an allusion to the um, title of Malcolm's autobiography. Terrified, I recoiled from her embrace. Uh, she had never liked Maud Gon because of Maud's betrayal of her husband, or you could use Maud's, Maud Gon was a disloyal wife. Okay? Both of the kind of making the same point, or you can easily use the same point. Uh, for dynastic reasons, we would tolerate Maud, but we would always see through her. Really important quotation there from the end of the poem. Alright, so that is a brief run through of the six poems. Okay? Now, we looked at exam questions to start, so let's go back to those two exam questions. We had the 2016 exam paper, which commented on, let's ask us to look at narrative approach, variety of issues, and emotional honesty, and the sample question we looked at favorite description, personal letters, and personally relatable. So, if we take the 2016 paper first, we're going to try and link some poems into these three different key terms. So, the first poem I'm going to look at is The Girl with the Keys to Pierce's Cottage. How does it link in? It links in because it's anecdotal, it's a narrative approach that describes his memory. A variety of issues we have the uh, emigration going on here, the emotional honesty that he is quite um, self deprecating, he doesn't falsify himself or heroize himself, um, and he shows his love and his despair at the loss of Kurt Banan. We have sport, again, anecdotal narrative approach that tells us a story from his past. A variety of issues, the issue of family loyalty and betrayal, the issue of mental health, uh, the issue of his relationship with his father, and emotional honesty is quite clear here. It's very uh, much about close uh, family relationship. We have the McBride dynasty. Again, we're having an anecdotal poem and a narrative approach that tells us a story. The issue here of this historical misconception and the emotional honesty being linked in to um, how his family feels differently about Margon to what most people perceive her as. We have the wife who smashed television gets jail. Again, another story, another short story. The issue here looking at misogyny, but also looking at the problems of modernity, of modern life and modernity, and the emotional honesty of the wife and how she feels. Finally, we have parents. Okay, so a narrative approach, maybe not quite as clear here. We do have a short kind of uh, image and description in terms of the, uh, how the child's life is going to be, uh, is going to progress. We have a variety of issues. The real issue here being the issue of being separated and the loss and the want for more connection between parents and children. And there's the emotional honesty in that. You know, in that he's very honest about both parties kind of losing out from this and both parties wanting and close to knowing it will never happen no matter how much they want. Alright, the sample question 
look at vivid description, personal memories, and universally relatable. So here I want to look at Nessa and the vivid description we're gonna to have to bring in that world cool. Very much personal because it is first it's about five meeting his wife. That's self-evident almost and universally relatable. And that is you can talk about his illusion to Greek mythology throughout his poem. Uh, girl with Keith Pierce Cottage, we have a description, he's very descriptive of the cottage itself and what that represents and of Coit's appearance. Uh, it's a personal memory, this is, uh, you know, he, it's told from first, first person perspective and it's universally relatable because it's not just about one girl, it's about, at least nationally relatable in terms of being about emigration from Ireland, really emigration from any country for probably in with it. We have the McBride Dynasty, very good description here of Maud Don. We have the personal memory, this is a memory of a child, of the event of his childhood. And this idea of the family um, not quite seeing eye to eye is very good. But I mean, we can see that even though he comes from a famous family, he can make their problem, their, the issues within that family seem like, you know, they, they're relatable to all families, most likely. Uh, sport, favorite description, you know, huge amount of description goes into the players in the match. You know, personal memories, this is again, you know, a personal memory about his, his relationship with his father. And it's uni the universal, rela universally relatable. Perhaps we can see in that we all have probably have moments where that didn't live up to our expectation. Maybe we all have someone that we feel we've let down, or we all have that being a bit of kind of uh, bitterness about different events in our lives. And finally, parents, again, vivid description, one thing back in the sea there, and the the sea, we have personal memories, and um, perhaps this is, you know, looking at his own relationship, his own feelings towards parents and children, and universally relatable, definitely, that everyone, you know, has these relationships, probably has felt the feelings he is going through in terms of being a child or being a parent. Alright, so that's the video for Dermot.